Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Prison Break Heist Guide. In this guide, I'll be showing you all the tips and tricks that you need to successfully complete the Prison Break Heist. Now before you ask, yes, I am fully aware that it's 2021 and this came out in 2015. However, everyone still gets invites for them, so I was hoping with some updated tips and tricks, you would potentially have a much easier time. First off, of course, is going to be armor and snacks. If you want to buy some armor, you can get that at your local ammunition. Depending on what your level is, you'll have the ability to purchase a certain amount of quantity of armor, as well as what type. The higher you rank, the better the armor, the more you can carry. It maxes out around rank 135. As for snacks, you can just buy those at the local store or you can get them for free from your facility, CEO, office, arcade and probably a bunch of other places that I forgot. If you want to make your life a little bit easier and skip the animation for eating snacks, then taking cover is the right way of doing so. Just simply keep eating those snacks until you're completely filled up also works when you're in a vehicle, so keep that in mind. Speaking of vehicles, your best friend is going to be the Armored Karuma if you're a newer player and don't have that much money. Still, after all these years, a very versatile vehicle that is very good to use. As well as the Taria Door and the Vigilante and the Insurgent Pickup Custom if you happen to have that at your disposal. The general rule of thumb is that you can use vehicles with rockets as long as it has four wheels and it doesn't fly in the air, you're gonna be totally fine. So with that said, let's get ourselves into the heist itself the first setup is the plane setup and well to make life easier for myself and under the general assumption that you have kind of got an idea how to hold a controller i know from personal experience that might not always seem the case with randoms regardless i'm under the assumption that you know how to drive a car in this game if not i don't think a game that's called grand theft auto is for you Jokes aside though, we'll be starting off with the pilot who will be helping out its team by clearing out the airfield a little bit and making sure that before you make the dash to the plane that you have all the room to do so. It will only be a few enemies and you don't have to worry about it too much but as soon as you can check your mini map you don't really see any more enemies around the hangar. It's typically a good time to go and make a dash for the plane while your fellow teammates will continue to start mowing everyone down in either an armored Kuruma or whatever preferred method you want to do. What you want to have your fellow teammates do as well is making sure that the airfield is clear of other cars as well. In the gameplay as the pilot I just simply just avoid them myself but I guess generally speaking it's a little bit smoother and it's a little bit easier to just have the airfield be clear so you can just take a nice clean takeoff. Flying again I'm going to be under the assumption that you know how to avoid buildings and that sort of poles and all that sort of extravagant stuff it's not super difficult to drive a straight line, at least that's what I hope. Either way, when you arrive at the airfield, what you want to do is the same thing as I do. The airfield is very big, so it shouldn't happen that you crash into the ground. Now I know from personal experience again, that this might happen. For that reason, you want to start slowing down around this point here, and then start slowing down to a degree where you're almost gliding the plane, and then very smoothly and gently land it down, and then even if necessary, just drive the plane to the hangar, and you should be totally fine. Don't crash it, please, all right? You'll cause your team a lot of frustration. Please don't. Thanks. Speaking of not dying, let's cover the airfield team, which, uh, I mean, let's be honest about this. If you have an armored Kuruma, it is excellent to use in this. Essentially, you're unable to take any damage while you're in this thing, and you just mow everyone down with your AP pistol, and you should be totally fine. If you're a low rank player, another very good choice is going to be the mini SMG. Some might refer to it as the Scorpion. Of course, like I mentioned before, as that team, you want to make sure to clear out the airfield while the pilot will be taking the Vellum. If you want to be an even better teammate, make sure to clean the runway too. Armored Kuruma is a heavy vehicle, so you can use it as a battering ram. If you want to be even more fancy, you can use the dozer on the left side of the airfield there, as you can see by this cheeky little screenshot. If you manage to clear out the LR field without dying, I'm pretty certain that you're now better than 90% of the people that attempted this mission, because you didn't die, and you were useful. So please keep that up until the end of the finale. Thank you. Moving on to the second setup of the prison break, which is the bus setup. This one, I, again, I'm pretty sure you know how to drive, so once you arrive at the bus, you want to go in front of the bus and then whip out your AP pistol or preferred weapon of choice, then go in front and shoot the driver out of his seat. 
As you have done that, you have a helicopter to take care of, so make sure to shoot that down too, so it can follow you into your next steps. Because, you know, police helicopters do tend to follow you. When you have shaken this police helicopter, and with that I mean you've blown it up, you can then head down to the quarry and then head into the hills. For some reason, they have no idea that people could be hiding in the hills, and a bright blue bus doesn't seem to stand out between a bunch of green plants. So for that reason, the cops have no idea where you are, and you can lose the cops very easily. Keep in mind that the rest of your teammates will have to lose this wanted level as well, which is something that randoms don't seem to understand and keep driving into cops all the time thinking it's going to be a good old time. Unfortunately for most of the randoms, it's going to take 20 minutes for them to lose the cops because they have no f idea what they're doing. After you've lost the cops, of course, it is just simply following that GPS location to that little shed and that's pretty much it. Mission complete. Next up is the station setup mission, which is going to be a little bit more difficult because you have to use your phone. Now, if you want to use your phone and you've never done that before, you want to open it and then press either square, X or space on your preferred platform of choice. You will then call the cops and ask them if they could pretty please bring you a police vehicle where you will definitely not murder them for it and then steal it. After you've done so, they probably will find out that you have murdered some cops and they will get a little bit upset. Of course, you want to then lose your cops, and like it was in 2015, and ever since the game came out, the sewers is going to be your best bet of doing so. So go to the sewers, lose the cops, or do it your own preferred way. The police station you need to go to is in Mission Row, so if you just want to go there and lose the cops while you're going there, then have at it as well, totally fine. When you're in the police station, make sure to smile and wave to the officers, compliment them on their badges like your Lance Vans, and just walk in there, grab the schedule, and then walk out again, and then make your way to the underpass where you will destroy the evidence. Because, you know, killing cops and just taking a schedule which you shouldn't have wasn't enough of crimes. It's now also time to destroy police property. Screw it. After that, just simply take the schedule to your apartment. You know, more driving. I'm sure you know how to do that. Up next is some actual useful advice, which I know is kind of crazy for those who have been watching this thinking, is this guy going to say anything else than lame jokes about randoms? Well, actually, just a moment. I probably will continue to do that. What I want you to do is make your way to this crane over here and then go all the way to the top and grab yourself a parachute and then jump down and immediately pull your parachute out. Now you might be thinking this is arguably the most foolproof thing for randoms to do. And you would be correct in thinking that they're definitely going to die. But this is the part where you need to be competent. I know it's difficult in Prison Break to find people like that, but hear me out. This way you can really speed up the process because you also land immediately in front of the container itself too. You just take out the two guards there, then shoot the lock, and then walk up to the door. If you do so, you will instantly warp your teammate to the car too, and you will both be sitting there nicely. Keep in mind that the person who is opening the door and is the first one to arrive there will also be the one that is driving. So keep that in mind too. Another very important thing, and you might have to scream down your microphone for this one in order to get the point across, is to make sure that you don't shoot anyone and just simply follow the route that I'm showing you on screen. If you do so, no enemies will follow you and for some miraculous reason, it will be possible that randoms might not die. Now I have said this that they might not die for a reason, because somehow, some way, they probably still will. Regardless, it won't be your fault because you're driving the right way. Jokes aside for a second, the short version of this route is just simply keep following the train tracks until you hit the Vinewood Casino area and you'll be able to jump on the highway and make your way to the drop-off point. Very simple stuff, nice and fill proof. You might have some traffic issues here and there where miraculously a fan decides to get in front of you for no apparent reason because GTA Online traffic is a B-star star CH. Moving on to the final setup mission of the Prison Break Heist, which is wet work, where there's two teams, one for City Hall, which is going to City Hall, another one who's just gonna kill a guy for no apparent reason other than he probably said something mean about your mom or something. Regardless, both teammates should make their way to the vantage point, and once you're there, you're gonna disobey the game and go back down again to get back into your armored Kuruma or whatever vehicle you're using, because then you can just bomb rush the two guys that are there, kill them both, steal the documents you have to steal, pick up your teammate again, and then get the hell out of there. Pretty simple stuff. Who needs sniper rifles anyways? It's 2021, we just use oppressors and stuff. 
Speaking of sniper rifles, ironically enough, we're gonna be using that for the other side of the team who has to eliminate the target because they made fun of your mom or something. Regardless, what I want you to do is make your way to this point on the map here and then whip out your sniper rifle and then look out for the bald man who has an awful lot of similarity to the guy we're going to rescue. If you're lucky enough, you should be able to see him just sitting there neatly on his chair and then make sure to not pull a thing that I did and miss him because that would be rather awkward. It's just one shot to the chest, a normal sniper rifle will do and you will have successfully completed the mission. It's really that simple. No need to hassle your way through the mansion and risk of dying. This is the way to go. Peace claps. And so we arrive at the prison break finale. There's a total of four roles inside of this finale, two of which are super similar to each other and are going to the same place, which is the prisoner and the prison officer. We're starting off with the prisoner role and we're going to be making our way to the prison bus and then make our way to the prison. Assuming you know how to drive, we're just gonna skip over that and pretend that's gonna be alright. As the prison officer, what you want to do before you make your way to the prison, by the way, is drop a weapon as well as some ammo for the prisoner, because that makes total sense that you can smuggle weapons inside of a prison, which should be highly secured when it really isn't. This way the prisoner should have an assault rifle available to him and doesn't have to deal with the AP pistol which isn't particularly great for the amount of distance we have to cover with shooting the targets. Obviously you want to make sure that you're completely stocked up on snacks and armor so you don't miraculously die by flying bullets. Whatever you do by the way, do not use the SMG. That is the worst gun in the game, I hate it and I want nothing to do with it. I genuinely believe that you're better off having a tickle contest with the guards than trying to shoot them with the SMG because it would probably be more effective. Now assuming you know how to use cover and auto aim on console, you should be totally fine by just shooting a bunch of guards, because this is where the demolition team comes in. Now in order to make life much easier for the prison team, what you can do is have the buzzard, which is controlled by the demolition team, and make sure that you start taking out some unexpected people within the prison. As long as you keep enough distance, you're going to be totally fine. Generally speaking, the rule of thumb is going to be the row that is outside of the prison and you want to stay away from that because if you get too close, they actually realize that there's a helicopter shooting rockets in the prison, which is kind of ironic because it's doing that anyways. Jokes aside, you're probably wondering, but what is the pilot going to do and doesn't the demolition team have to help out shooting out those hydras? This would be true if the laser had very few mirrors and or the mission wasn't designed in 2014. So for that reason, they're completely oblivious to you flying behind them and you can just keep doing that and the demolition team will be just be on a merry way helping out the prison team and making life a whole lot easier. Once you have cleared out all the guards and Raskowski has decided to still follow you instead of just standing still in a random place and getting himself killed, you can make your way to one of the armored trucks and then use that to make your way to the airfield. I am aware that there is much easier and much quicker ways of just simply landing the plane in whatever place close by to the prison, but for the sake of making everyone's life less confusing and easier, we're just gonna go for an airfield strategy here. Once you have gotten the armored truck, just simply make your way to the airfield and then just wait for the pilot to land and you'll be on your merry way. Please do me a favor, do not walk into the rotors. I've had some idiot walk into the rotors during my High Sword Random series I don't know how he did it, I'm still wondering, like I'm still in shambles and in tears that it happened, but please don't do that to your fellow teammates, I'm literally on my knees. Like the checkpoints in this are brutal, you're basically gonna have to start over the entire thing, so please don't do that. Speaking of things that made me cry and burst into tears, the pilot has one simple objective fly all the way up to the checkpoint. Now please do me a favor and like keep going up instead of like just going in a straight line and then suddenly wondering why the Vellum is not actually a plane instead of just a wet tile that keeps going down instead of going up. Just keep going up and just hit the checkpoint you should be totally fine. Now the next crucial point too is that you need to parachute. I know it's difficult to like pull your parachute after like diving down for like 6,000 feet, but I believe in you. I believe that you can pull a parachute at the appropriate time and not let into the helicopter rotors. 
Jokes aside for a second though, as the plane make sure to go all the way up and don't start going up until you can see the minimap and as you're leveled with a checkpoint. The Vellum is pretty notorious for rather going down than going up for some bizarre reason, so keep pulling up until you can see on your minimap that you basically leveled out. I've had it happen to me in my highest random series where a guy spent the best part of 10 minutes trying to like circle around and going up again, it wasn't happening. The person who is in the helicopter, make sure to actually wait until everyone has parachuted down and then kind of spread out to make sure that if you do land your helicopter, no one actually will land on your rotors. It's a little bit safer, it's not entirely necessary because the beach is big enough, but with anything, it's probably just best off to be better safe than sorry. After that, just simply get into the helicopter and fly off. Don't crash into the mountain, which, I mean, it probably is possible that someone will do it, but, you know, you never know. I believe in you. And just fly off into the sunset. Heist complete. And after all that gruesome effort of going through the entire heist, you will get a wonderful $500,000 and a guarantee that you will never play this again because, well, Kai Perico was much better for making money. Economy in 2021 truly is a beautiful thing in GTA Online. Regardless, that does bring us to the end of this Prison Break Guide. Make sure to leave it a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, I guess. I mean, if anything, if this video does well, I'll probably do the same thing for your May Labs, just for the memes. Why not? And if you really do like what you see on the channel, you know, consider becoming a member. Like Chloe, Robert, Loose Fire, Captain Price, Shakulu, and Dr. Strange Love. Join them and all the other fellow members by clicking the join button down below. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all late. Oh yeah, and by the way, go watch my High Street Random series. It's pure gold, and you'll probably cry your eyes out from the amount of stuff that the randoms seem to be doing for some bizarre reason.